It's not paradise forever in the Philippines. This is one of the things somebody brought up, and I will tell you now, if you keep putting a link in your um, comments, they all get deleted. Um, I'm not here as a spam tool, and I'm bringing up your topic because your topic was an interesting and relevant one, but you don't need to put a link in every single video. I let you through with one link already. You're not getting one in every single comment. Um, what he's talking about is a lot of people think that it's lifelong. Now, lifelong moving to the Philippines is two parts here. Because there's a lot of guys I've met that quite simply expect to die in the Philippines. They see themselves as having 10 to 15 years in them. Um, those guys, because they set themselves up with that minimum goal, can fall foul quite early on because their assumption is that is it. You know, so they don't plan on being too content, should we say. They, you know, they don't set themselves up to keep themselves occupied and busy for that period. It's just pottering around for the next 10, 15 years. It's fine if you're happy doing that, but a lot of them aren't. That's the problem. Because they didn't plan on um, getting bored. They didn't plan on uh, the realities, because often, often a lot of the people make these decisions without ever being to the Philippines as well. So they sell everything, move to the Philippines, and suddenly it's not what they expected. Um, with that in mind, I do recommend taking some holiday time and going to the Philippines well before you commit to your retirement there. Get a feel for the place, get an understanding for the place, get a thought, is this good enough for 15 years? On top of that, what are you going to do during that time? Is it worth getting a small holding, getting a small farm just to potter around and do some organic farming or something? Um, not for financial gain, but just to keep occupied. Or is it, I mean, myself, I do aquaponics. Um, but at the same time, um, I was always busy anyway. You know, like I built the peso peso machines when I was there. Um, so it's a mix of electronics, carpentry and stuff. It's always something I could be doing. Did a lot of the construction work myself, as well as working with the, the local guys as well. Get them to all the heavy stuff and I'll do the nice easy. Well, that's unfair. No, it's not. I, I did the awkward stuff. Like when they build the windows wrong, the outer square. And then I'm going to square the, the windows up for the jealousy blades. Um, but ultimately, you need to recognize that if you're going to be there for 10, 15 years, what are you going to do? Is the country ideal for you? in the sense that if you have any medical conditions is any of that going to impact you? Do you have access to the right facilities? Do you have access to the right medication? Um, how are you going to be comfortable for the next 10-15 years? Um, I know it sounds a bit doom and gloom but it's not. It's just simply getting a bit of pen and paper out there and planning on what you need because I find too many people don't even recognize where they're going with this. Like the guy I met at Hong Kong airport, he didn't even know about the visas, yet he's flying into the Philippines to live there. He hasn't even, hasn't even thought about it. Now, not being funny, but if he was going to somewhere like India, he would have found it a bit more difficult to deal with visas. Um, but the point being is, you've got to plan ahead. And being occupied is one of the key elements. Now, the other side of this being will go to my age group, guys are a bit younger as well, is they may actually plan on being in the Philippines long term, but then have changes of circumstances. So when you plan to be there forever, I'm here forever, um, what if your wife died? And you may think, well, that, that's unlikely to happen. Philippines has quite a high mortality rate relating to vehicle crashes and stuff. You just have to look at how the vehicles are built and how many have even got one seatbelt, never mind a bus full. Um, what if, because you think, well, why does that matter? Well, if the house and everything's in her name, it can affect you, because it's not going to go to you. Um, if, depending on how you set it up, it could go to their relatives, which means you're out, of, out on your backside. And some guys get locked into that. That's why, I, personally, I like renting a lot of places. Um, Yes, we do own property in the Philippines, but that's also tied to the fact I've also got children. Um, so it becomes a legacy thing that's passed on. 
Um, what about having kids? Education system I find here in Spain is bearable. Um, I do find their mathematics system a complete joke, but that's just for this region, it's not the whole of Spain. Um, but at the same time, the multilingual side of it, I mean, if you speak in Spanish and English, you've got some huge bases covered wanting to work anywhere in the world later. I also find that a lot of the people we're associated with are well-educated people. Um, I mean, for example, the, the woman yesterday is a biochemist. Her husband's um, a qualified lawyer. Um, Andreas, a lawyer. His wife, a lawyer. Um, a, lo a lot of educated people around. In the UK, there is a lack of investment in education because of the costs associated with it. Or people doing courses that are completely worthless. I do find we, we know a lot of veterinarians, uh, dentists, um, a lot of skilled people. And because I don't know why, I'll be honest with you, I don't know why. I don't know, I haven't looked into the university side, but it must be a lot cheaper than uh, the UK <laughs> because there seems to be a lot of people that focus on their education. Under 25s, there's high unemployment in Spain, but at the same time, I do hear from the education minister that was complaining about it being the parents and the parents don't drive the kids to actually get educated and stuff so I can understand that but you get that everywhere you get that everywhere in the United Kingdom you get a lot of kids that think they're going to be a rapper or something else at no point is there anything beyond that going through their brain that well hang on a minute why don't you get a job at McDonald's for this summer I'm too good for McDonald's you know, it's that sort of attitude, and you're like, you're an idiot. Go and get some work experience. Realize what things cost. Realize that you're not supposed to live at your parents till you're 45. You know, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's very skewed. And I do, I've got to admit that I do blame a lot of that on the media, and I do blame some of it on the education system, because although that it's promoted, you can be whatever you want to be. A lot of the time, they will never achieve that. And if you ask a teacher privately, being an adult, they'll say, nah, that ain't going to happen. But they'll go with the kids, yeah, you, you do whatever you want to do. You'll get it, you know. I mean, my, my, uh, I remember my chemistry teacher said, said to my parents, one parent's evening, Matt could achieve whatever he wants if he decides to do so. And that's, that was her response to that, because she knew I could do stuff. It's just I'm, I've always been awkward. Um, but that's how I've got on, you know, then the day I do auditing, so I've got to be awkward anyway, because that's how you find out when things are wrong, the same as I like to know how everything works and understand it, you know, that that's me. But anyway, um, I completely lost tangent where we were, forgot what we were talking about. Oh yeah, <laughs> Philippines is not forever. Yeah, the, the opportunities are limited in the Philippines, in the sense that Philippine passport doesn't open the world to you. Um, so some guys plan on being in the Philippines, then have the family life, then they start to see that they want to take their kids back abroad to get educated and stuff. So that then moves the goalposts. Um, and the other side of this being that you may have Western kids or something else that draws you back to the West. Um, a couple of friends of ours, one of their um, parents has got Alzheimer's. Um, so they basically had to scrap their entire plans for retirement and go and look after their relative back in the West. Um, yeah, because I mean it's a peculiar one because the, she agreed because it, it's not full blown Alzheimer's at the minute, um, but she'd agreed that she wanted to go into a care home, and then after they started putting all the wheels in motion, decided to change all that. Um, so they started planning to move and then had to move back. So things can change and one of the things I do recommend is always having goals but don't expect that they will always hit the mark every time. There's so many variables in life. So many variables. Like this thing with the 12,000 peso fine out the LTO. Well the thing is you could be going fine. You got your budget, you're right for the year, got all this and you get hit with a 12,000 peso fine which then Man it moves all your funding. You may have to get a loan to pay the fine or get your vehicle back because they impound it or whatever. And then they charge you another fine for, for holding your vehicle. There's a whole ream of stuff that can um, happen 
when one bad thing happens. And one of, that's one of the things I always try and secure myself from by in, investing in, in, in front. Um, which is why when, like with the crypto markets down at the moment, I start moving into other things because the market is fairly stagnant. It's going sideways. And at the end of the day, there is other developments coming out in the very near future that are going to change that. But in all honesty, I come up with a really good idea the other night, um, and I'm going to look at that because there is something about blockchain that a lot of people have missed. Um, and it's not that I'm sort of Einstein or whatever. I've just seen an opportunity in it that people aren't even looking at because I would say greed and egos are getting in the way. So there's an opportunity that's come up that just a light bulb come on on my head when I was watching the tennis over at the, the bar over the road. And I just thought, nobody's even trying that. And it just, yeah. So, yeah, I mean... Those are the sort of things, things can change. You can have a road accident, things change. And it may sound all doom and gloom, but it's not. It's, it's quite simply just recognizing that I found the Philippines myself to be going along gray, everything's fine, then something happens. And it can throw things into turmoil. Or you have a set plan and then something changes. You know, for example, an earthquake. Or like, um, another natural disaster that affects you directly um, and that's why I always think forward planning I always think having money offshore as well as on I mean I, I've got money in multiple countries um, but at the same time you've got to think for this this stuff yourself and I know it sounds quite in-depth but a lot of it is it, it can be quite simplistic in the sense that even like for you've got a budget of thousand dollars a month if you can put a hundred dollars a month into another um, easy accessible account then you've got your personal cover for any medical emergencies if you can't afford medical insurance in the same way you've got the same budget there if somebody uh, has an accident or something breaks down or stuff but I always try and keep putting that money back and then if you've got a month where you've took a load of cash out and then your money comes in next month Instead of going back into the routine, try and get that fund back out. That's what I do. Every month, there's a fund that is built up in the Philippines. All this YouTube money goes to the Philippines. Um, the the rented, rented apartments in the Philippines pays all the electrics and the general maintenance stuff. But the YouTube stuff is sitting in a bank account. Um, this is actually growing because um, we're about to start the renovations on another apartment. But bear in mind... Uh, yeah, as somebody said, Philippines isn't isn't forever, you know. But you could take it from the. I mean, it does say paradise as well. I mean, it, I can't really call it paradise. I mean, you, I think a paradise is a personal thing anyway. You know, some people are happier in like being overwhelmed with work and being a completely. Um, a, an environment which is very high tension, high high speed and whatever and for them that's their paradise in the same way being on a beach is fantastic for, for other people myself don't like sand <laughs> um, so for that that would be somebody else's paradise for me what the Philippines is is freedoms freedom to ride my motorbike around freedom to be able to travel cheaply freedom to experience many islands and cultures and a lot of other stuff in a very localized area. It's it's freedom. That's that's the the paradise for me. The UK has some, but I find that everything's too expensive in the UK these days. Um, but also, it's everything. Well, yeah, everything's just orientated around money. Philippines. You, I mean, if you've got twenty pesos, you'll find somebody who'll give you accommodation for twenty pesos. I know some of you guys are going to go. No, you can't. You can, <laughs> you can. Um, it's bizarre what the sort of stuff you can do. I mean, when we went airsoft, there was about I think there was forty of us, and we ended up staying on this beach um, hut to the point where we opened the one of the guys opened the window and it fell off. Um, but that was twenty pesos a night. Twenty pesos a night between forty people. <laughs> but yeah, they instead of spending the money in the room, they spent it on the tandoi, which is why. 
the first day we were, we were in a good chance of winning the tournament, the second day we dropped down the rankings because everyone still had a hangover. But anyway guys, thanks for watching.